So good morning, everybody. Thank you, Lorenzo, for the introduction, and thank you, uh, all the organizers, Lorenzo, Paolo, and Stefano, for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here, even in this uh, online mode. So the talk is about uh, a three-dimensional virtual element solver for a scalar elliptic equation in mixed form. Um, the results were obtained in collaboration with uh, Franco Dassi from the University of Milan Bicocca. So we have seen in these days that uh, since uh, its birth, uh, virtual elements have been uh, actually uh, developed for a wide range of uh, engineering problems, not only engineering, also physical and general problems. And when the when the problem becomes more and more complex and large scale, so with a certain delay, people also start to, to work on uh, developing iterative solvers for this kind of problems. And so far in the, regarding them, uh, we have, uh, so researchers have considered two main classes of uh, solvers. Uh, domain decomposition, so non-overlapping domain decomposition, such as BDC and FETDP, were considered in this paper by Pertoruzza, Pennac, and Prada, and a couple of papers. And then the other class of domain decomposition, the overlapping additive parts, was considered in a, two papers by Calbo. And then uh, there is a paper on multigrid, also optimal uh, with respect to the degree, of approximation by Paolo Antonietti, Lorenzo Mascotte, and Marco Verani. So these works uh, were focusing on a scalar elliptic equation in uh, primal form. Here, our goal is to develop uh, an approximation method that also uh, a linear solver strategy for, for um, scalar elliptic equation in mixed form. So here is our variational settings. We look for uh, velocity u and pressure uh, p in uh, these two continuous spaces that satisfy the, the variational formulation of, uh, of a scalar elliptic equation in mixed form. So here I have, I have already augmented the velocity space with a, directly, with a boundary condition. So with this particular boundary condition, the pressure are not uniquely determined, so we have to fix the constant adding this condition on the, in the pressure space. If you change the, the boundary condition on velocities, this condition should be dropped. Okay, A denotes a standard bilinear form with the integral of two velocities, and B, the bilinear form, the bilinear form with the integral of the divergence of the velocity times the pressure. The coefficient nu will be a scalar and uh, positive and piecewise constant. Okay, I apologize for, uh, but uh, we need some, uh, some notations to construct the method. So omega h will be uh, our polyedral decomposition. So here we are in, in three dimensions. P is the generic polyedron of the decomposition. Then we need uh, uh, some monomial basis. So mkp will be a, a monomial basis or scaled with respect to the size of the polygon, of the polyhedron, and uh, shifted in order that the um, center, so in this very center of the polyhedron. MKF is analogous, monomial basis uh, for the, each phase of the polyhedron. And then we take uh, this vector space of polynomials of degree K. This space can be split into the direct sum of two spaces where GKP are the vector polynomials, which are gradients of a polynomial of degree K plus one. And then we have its orthogonal um, complement. It can be shown in our paper is shown how to do it. It's quite tricky, but we can construct a monomial basis also for this uh, com orthogonal complement. Okay, these are the notation that we need, that we will need to define our degrees of freedom. But first, let's see uh, who are the, um, the local dense spaces 
So for the velocities, we take the risk vector functions defines on the general polyhedra, which are, so the normal component is a, uh, on the phase a polynomial of degree K. The divergence of the H is a polynomial degree K minus one. And the curve, a vector polynomial degree K minus one. So with this definition, the polynomial or the polynomials of degree k are inside the space, but then there are other functions which we don't know and that are the virtual. For pressure, we use a standard space of a, a polynomial degree k minus one. So if k is the degree of our approximation, pressure will be uh, in case k equal one, pressure will be the constant and then uh, p1 and so on. Okay, the degrees of freedom for the local uh, uh, velocity space are of three kinds. So we have phase moments here where we need for the definition, the monomial basis on the phase. Then we have uh, internal moments, gradient moments here. And here we need the, the monomial basis on the, of the, um, on the polyhedron. And then we have with these internal cross moments. So with this set of uh, degrees of freedom, we, we can uh, compute uh, quantities that will be fundamental to define our um, approxim approximate by linear forms. This quantity are, so we can compute uh, uh, the polynomial, which is the normal component of a virtual function for each phase of the polyhedron. Then we can compute the divergence of a virtual function and the L2 projection. This L2 projection from the local uh, velocity space to the polynomials of degree K. This is thanks to the choice of the degrees of freedom. So the discrete local bilinear forms are then defined in this way. So discrete uh, uh, A, by linear form is done uh, using the projection, the two projections here in the first term, plus the stabilization. For the stabilization, we use uh, the doffy doffy stabilization. Then the uh, local by linear forms for B is actually is not approximate because thanks to the choice of the degrees of freedom, we can compute exactly the divergence of the virtual function. And then we have a load term. Okay, so these are our local bilinear forms. Then we can go to the global spaces. So the global spaces where we are looking the solutions are just obtained gluing the local spaces. Note that uh, the pressures are discontinuous. Okay, so in case uh, in the low order case, the pressures will be piecewise constant, and then P1 discontinuous. And, uh, and so on. Okay, the global bilinear forms are just obtained by summing the local ones. And here we have our discrete problem. So now we will see some uh, results regarding the, the approximation properties so or convergence results. We'll consider four kinds of meshes of increasing uh, shape complexity, so hexahedral meshes, uh, octahedral, Voronoi, and this nasty mesh, random meshes. Uh, so just an observation, this last kind of mesh, uh, I would not solve any meaningful physical problem with meshes just to stress our, our, uh, our method. Okay, here are the convergence result. Um, well, two errors of the velocity and pressures. And what we expect from the theory is recover since we expect the K plus one order convergence for the velocity and K for the, the pressures. So here the, the color is the degree. So red is the low order degree one, uh, blue is degree two, uh, green three and uh, 
this magenta is for. And uh, the marker indicates the, the kind of mesh, uh, which discretizes the unit cube. And you see that uh, uh, for each color, the, the curves related to the different mesh are almost superimposed. This means that uh, this discretization is uh, quite robust with respect to the shape of, uh, of the polyhedra. Okay, now let's go to the solver. So the system that which arises from uh, discretization is of course a saddle point linear system of this form, is symmetric. Actually, C is, sorry, C is the zero part of the fact that we have to impose the, um, the zero average of the pressure. So we have the last row and the last column, which is different from zero, but inside this block is zero. Um, Okay, looking at uh, this block structure uh, inspired from this, this block structure, we can develop, we can construct block diagonal preconditions of this form. So we will uh, construct this B1 and B2 matrices, which are approximation of the coercive block A and of the Schur complement. And we provide two, two possibilities. So the first one we call block sure. In this case, B1 is the diagonal, the diagonal of A. It's simply the diagonal of A, which we will invert. And for B, B, B2, we take the, um, the approximate sure complement defined here. Approximate because we don't invert A, of course, A, but we invert the diagonal of A. So we compute this matrix, we should complement matrix S that can be then invert, inverted using maps. So the should complement is approximated, but its inversion is done uh, exactly. The other uh, block precondition is called block reg, is based on a regularization technique. Uh, that means that the first block is approximated with, is augmented actually, the matrix A is augmented with this matrix where W is the scale identity. And we, uh, and then B1 is the algebraic matrix with approximation of this matrix A plus B, etc. And for the block B2, we just take this scale identity. Of course, the, the choice of uh, the scaling uh, parameter gamma is crucial. We don't, we do not have a theoretical, um, explanation on how to choose that. We, empirically, we, see, we saw that the best choice is, is a gamma which goes as the order of a H square, so as the H square, where H is the mesh parameter. Okay, as algebraic matrix, for the first block, we use the, the GMG, so the algebraic matrix precondition provided by the PETC library. So the runs are all done in parallel on a Linux cluster. Uh, the code is a C++ code developed by Franco Dassi and the parallelization is based on uh, this library Patsy based on uh, the standard MPI. So this first test is a strong scaling test on the cube meshes with low order VAM approximation K equal one and then K equal two. The number of processors increase from one to 32 here is a strong scaling test. That means that the mesh is fixed. So the number of degrees of freedom is fixed about 400,000. And uh, we increase the number of processor and we see if the uh, GMRS iterations in case of iterative solvers remain almost bounded, increasing the number of processors. And if the solution, the CPU time uh, reduces, increasing the processor. And we compare the two iterative solvers with our gold standard, which is MOPS. So here TS is the, is the CPU time for assembling the matrix in seconds. And we see that the scaling is quite uh, good. It reduces, increasing number of processes. The iterations of both uh, the iterative solvers uh, remain, uh, in case of block sure, they are constant. So it scales perfectly. In case of block reg, they increase, but uh, uh, 
not so much, so they are quite uh, is, a, is a small increase with respect to a number of processes. So it's quite scalable. Time, the time is reduced, but uh, okay, they are far from ideal speed up, uh, at least at the for the last steps. But what is uh, nice, we are happy for, is that uh, if you compare, so in red you see the best CPU times for each uh, in each column. So if you compare nine with required by block sure with months, we have a gain factor about five okay, in the solution time. There is a gain factor also increasing the order of approximation. So here k equals two, but it reduces. So here with respect to months, months we have only a factor two of gain. Um, because as you see that the number of iteration increase. So it, it seems that uh, uh, these iterative solvers, and actually we, we could expect, expect it, suffer for high order in the case of high order. And this is still more clear if we change the kind of mesh, we go to the octahedra. Uh, in case uh, k equal one, the low order, we have again a small advantage using the iterative solver block sure with respect to months is about a factor of 10. But then if we go to a high order case, so k equal two, uh, months wins. Because you see that the number of iterations of iterative of the GMRS uh, increase a lot, passing from the k equal one to the k equal two cases. So last slide is about the Voronoi. The Voronoi, again, uh, MAMPS, the direct solver, so MAMPS suffers a lot. You see that uh, we have a, a factor of 60 of advantage or, or reduction of time using the iterative solver in the lower order case. And of course, again, we see that uh, increasing the order, the iterative solver uh, deteriorates in, uh, in the number of iterations. It's still uh, more competitive in uh, uh, regarding the CPU time with respect to months, but again, the factor reduced. So concluding, we have uh, developed two block diagonal preconditions for this uh, three-dimensional BEM approximation of uh, elliptic equation mixed four. In case of low order, they are very effective and uh, perform better than our, at our, than our best uh, direct solver. But there is a need of work to, to construct more robust approximation when uh, the order of, uh, of the VEM approximation increase. And so we are working on, uh, on developing a BDDC precondition with, together with Stefano Zampini for this class of problems. And that's all, thank you very much.